In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I edit cinematic recap videos. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography. And in this tutorial, I'm going to take you through how I edit cinematic recap videos, specifically how I edited the cinematic recap for the Grey Cup, which is the Canadian Football League's championship game. Myself, along with some of my coworkers at the CFL, were able to shoot the cinematic recap video for this event, and then I was actually given the responsibility of editing the whole thing together on a pretty tight timeline, which I was very excited about and was a lot of fun. And since I've finished the project, it's gone out and I've had a little bit of time to reflect on it, I wanna to talk to you about some of the strategies and kind of like the workflow that was used. Now, so I'm sure you can see the Christmas tree behind me. This is gonna come out far after Christmas, but I'm filming this on Boxing Day. So I have not had my Christmas tree up for a month and a half. It's supposed to be there. I'll take it down in like a week or two. Anywho, let's start by looking here at my mood board for the event. So this is kind of something I'll throw together to make sure that everybody who's shooting the event is on the same page about where we want to be at certain times, what events we're looking to capture, and like what visuals I need to bring the story together when I'm editing. And I've also included specific timestamps of what part of the day we're showing at what time in the edit so that I can make sure that when I'm filming, I'm getting enough coverage to fill that time slot in the video. I wanted to start with some wide establishing shots. And I've, you can see I've taken a lot of reference from like NFL film stuff here. And I think I actually used some shots here that were created by AI just as like reference to kind of give me something that was like realistic looking, but not necessarily already done. But anyway, just establishing shots, shots of the prairies, shots of the tailgate. The game was being played in Saskatchewan, which is like the prairies in Canada, so it's very flat, and I kind of wanted to show that if we could. Kind of wanted stuff like in the tunnel, off the bus, and close-ups of players, like kind of like a fit check type of thing. Then we got player warm-ups, the arrival of the Great Cup trophy, which is a pretty important part of a championship game. So the trophy gets walked out by Mounties and there's like a whole show around it, planes fly over, it's like a big deal. So I wanted to make sure that we captured that appropriately. Getting some fan shots, the sunset for the game since it's a night game, and then just kind of like typical game stuff. First half highlights and second half highlights, like this is the unpredictable part of a game. Like you don't know how the game's gonna go, if there's even gonna be good highlights in one half or the other. So I just put like generic good shots that like would be nice to have. And then after second half highlights, just post game celebration. And this is also kind of like impromptu type of thing that you have to kind of go with the flow on. Cause you, one, you don't know who's gonna win. And then two, you don't know which players are gonna give you really emotional reactions and who's gonna look really good on camera, who's gonna be disappointed and sad, who's gonna be extremely happy. So let's just start at the beginning of the edit. You can see that I have this color grade layer here and I can turn it on, but we're just gonna leave it off so we can scrub through this stuff a little bit faster. And we were fortunate to have a drone pilot here who was able to get some shots for us as like scenics, I guess. And he actually went out and shot sunrise shots for us of the stadium, which was very cool. So I was able to use that for the start. There were, there were four of us shooting, but three of us were kind of working together as a team. And then we had one floater who was freelance and the three of us who were working as a team kind of just went and shot stadium scenics prior to the game. So we all got there like, two or three hours early. We filmed shots inside the stadium, outside the stadium, stuff with the tailgate. And then I was able to use a lot of those shots to kind of set the stage at the start of the video. So we have the sunrise wide shot here and uh, from the drone. And then we have this shot. We have another sunrise from in the stadium. And then we have one over the tailgate area to kind of show like inside the stadium, outside the stadium, tailgate in the morning when we're starting the video. And we kind of roll into a bunch of fan shots here. I really wanted to make a point of putting impactful commentary under the start of the video to really set the stage, not just with visuals. And when you actually listen to this without the commentary, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It's not very engaging. But I found that once I grabbed that little commentary bit of the commentator talking about the CFL arriving in Canada's heartland for the championship, the whole thing kind of pieced together and it gave me a lot of structure to work with to put the edit in a good order. Then we have more stadium shots. I thought that this shot was really interesting. This is one that my boss got. I just love like the symmetry in it. He also got this one with the purple windows, which I thought was very cool. And then I kind of like grabbed this one here just to kind of, you know, 
play into the whole sunrise, sun flare type of thing. I also like the low perspective with a gimbal that you get when you move close to grass. It makes everything seem like fast and cool and it creates a clear foreground and background when you shoot on a wide lens on a gimbal low to the ground and either like push forward or move to the side. So I have a lot of those shots kind of just like mixed into most of the videos I did this week, but I wanted to make sure I got one in here and I think this is a really nice one. And then we just filmed both teams arriving as we had outlined on the storyboard. So we have Toronto arriving here and myself and my boss shot these shots. So he was standing right here by the door. You can see him right over there filming guys walking out. And then I have the Sony 20 mil and my a7 IV on a gimbal and I'm filming guys walk out like this. And then we had the other guy who was working with us right here filming all the Winnipeg stuff and he got walkout shots of them. Now, I think his shots were a lot better than what my boss and I got because they were walking out like in the sunlight and it was just like really well lit and there was lots of space. Whereas the Toronto Argos who we were filming were literally walking out of like a loading dock that was super loud and not very bright and kind of looked ugly from those angles, which is really disappointing. But like we got through that segment, so I was kind of fine with it. Then we filmed warm ups, and honestly, not too much to capture during warm ups. You just kind of want to get close ups of players, like anything that shows emotion of guys like preparing, looking very intense, get contemplating the events that are to come. That stuff's all good. There was a little like concert, I guess before the game kicked off. So just got a couple shots of that since it's kind of something that we should throw in. And then I moved into the trophy arrival. So I got this shot in the tunnel of Mounties walking out, bringing the trophy to the stadium, which I thought was just perfect. I really like this shot, mostly because of the symmetry, I think. You can see it says gray cup or coupe, because it's coupe gray en français, but it says gray cup right here and there's the gray cup right in the middle. And then you have one Mountie on either side holding the cup, walking out to a packed crowd. I, it's such a good shot. I'm really happy with this one. And like these are kind of the types of shots I was hoping for when I wanted to get the trophy arrival. And then one shot to show that the crowd is very full. And then we have our tunnel shots. Again, I don't think the tunnel looks super great, but the wide angle gimbal shots just kind of were enough and I was able to get what I needed. Then we kind of got into player intros. And I want to talk about how we actually set up to film the teams running out and what like the strategy was to make sure that no matter what, we got all the coverage that we needed. So there were three of us working this. We had one person stay at this angle on the front here. And their job was just to like, get a wide shot of the team running out. And then as players run close to you, just pick off ISO shots of players who are reacting well or key players who we've identified already that we want to get shots of. And this is kind of like our safety to make sure that no matter what, we have good usable shots. And then for myself, my boss, we were both running out with one team each. So I ran out with Toronto here and then went and got an angle for Winnipeg who was running out next. And he waited in the tunnel and then ran out with Winnipeg. So these are shots from Colin, who was the other guy working with us. And he got these wide shots here. This is a shot from the other freelancer who we had who helped us out a little bit. So those wide shots were very helpful. This is me after I ran out with Toronto, unfortunately. I ran out too late and didn't actually get a good usable shot of the Argos, which is like, it happens sometimes where you're running out with a team and just, you don't get anything that you feel is good or usable. So I just didn't bother cutting to it. And we knew this was a possibility, hence why we had the safety person at the very front there. So then I posted up near the tunnel and got a shot of Winnipeg running out from kind of closer. We cut back to the wide angle that we had. And then this is my boss's run out shot of one of these players running right past the gray cup, which I thought was very cool. And then we got more safety shots. You can see that that was very useful. And then I saw this player running out holding the big W flag. So as he was running out right at the very end, I just got up from that spot that I was sitting at watching all the players run out and followed him all the way out. And I actually posted a longer version of this shot on my Instagram, which I think is a really cool shot. I posted like the full 20 second shot 
in slow motion, just running out with him in the stadium, being like all huge and all the fans there and stuff. So you can go check that out if you want, but I just cut to it for a second in this video and it, it served its purpose. And then we continue with the festivities. We have the plane flyover. So here's the plane flyover from the Winnipeg sideline. And then this is the shot that I got of the starting running back for the Argos in like taking a knee and like preparing for the game. And then you have all blurry in the background, all the planes flying over and all the fireworks. And then we got a couple more shots of guys getting ready for the game. And then from here, we kind of just get into the first half action. And honestly, there wasn't too much that happened in the first half of this game. I think that it was like one QB sneak touchdown, which didn't look super thrilling on camera. And then like a bunch of field goals. And that was the half. So I kind of rushed through the first half in like 30 seconds. I didn't want to spend too much time on a part of the game that wasn't so important, especially since, as you'll see, the second half was really action packed. So I'll show this bit to you and then we'll stop this video again when we want to talk. I think that hurdle shot's like the only shot from the first half that I got that I'm like really happy with. That fan shot was really nice. I think it's important to show fan shots to kind of like convey the emotion that's in the stadium as well as the emotion on the field when an important action happens. So I was really happy with that one fan shot there. And then we just have like the rest of the video, a couple field goals, and that's halftime. And now we have the halftime show. I don't remember what the exact setup was for this, but we at least had me at the top getting close-up shots, and then somebody at the bottom here getting like wide shots of the stage and filming the performance that was happening on the bottom. So here's the wide shot of the stadium, and then here's one of the performers from close. This is the performer that was happening on field level. So we got shots of him from the person who was on field. And then we have another couple close-ups that I shot. And we have like one pyro shot at the end. I thought it'd be nice to kind of use like a little, like a blurrier one. I just like the way the bouquet looks in this shot. So I just decided we were going to it in. And then I got a little bit of impactful commentary from a halftime interview and players running out for the second half to kind of set the stage for the very exciting second half that's to come. Now at this point, all we're really doing is like capturing action. I'm not gonna force you to watch this whole thing, but if you wanna go see the entire second half and like this entire video without me stopping and talking about it, I'm gonna link it down in the description. But I didn't make a point of showing plays earlier in the second half from players who were more impactful later in the second half. So spoiler alert for later on in the video. But the player right here who gets this sack, number 40, plays a big role at the end of the video, so I kind of wanted to introduce him as a character a little bit earlier on, so that when he did something later, like it kind of made sense, you can be like, oh, that guy, I heard his name in commentary earlier, I know he did something, we've been talking about him. So that was kind of the logic there, we're gonna skip forward a little bit. There weren't a whole ton of like great touchdowns here. Also something I forgot to mention, when halftime ended, I, instead of going back down to the field, took the wide lens and the gimbal that I was already filming on, and just went higher up into the stadium and started filming these like wide sweeping shots that we could use of the stadium totally full as like establishing shots for later. And then I was able to put one into the start of the second half, which was really nice. And then we had the two other guys I was working with on the field filming. And this is something we had talked about beforehand and planned for to make sure that we had this specific shot. It helped bring us into the second half. And it was nice to have a little bit of that variety and kind of show the whole atmosphere. Anyway, skipping forward, we have like more touchdowns. This quarterback sneak stuff, nothing super exciting. This is just capturing game action, which I talk about in this channel all the time. And then as we got closer to crunch time, I made sure to cut to a shot of the scoreboard every once in a while, just to like provide context on what's happening in the game, how close it is. Because if you never cut to the scoreboard, it's hard to really tell what's happening, who's winning, and like if the game is close or not. So after every, after every major score, after every touchdown at least, and into the fourth quarter, I would cut back to the scoreboard more frequently and then cut to fan shots as I did in the first half fairly frequently as well. And this is an interesting one we had. A kick return here. They ended up getting brought back like 80 yards or something for a touchdown. We are able to fortunately have three people that 
all had angles of this plate and we cut them all together. But if we didn't, I don't know how we would have showed this. But this is my angle at the start. I got the kicker kicking the ball, we got the punt, and then we have the returner scooping the ball up at like his own 10 yard line and running with it. So I have the first part of him running and then once we see him kind of break through the first line of defenders here, we cut to the angle that was like further up the field and we show him beating the punter here and now he's off to the races. And then we cut to the guy who was like way down at the other end zone waiting for the action to come back at him just in case and here he is with the uh, returner running around in the end zone after he scores his touchdown. So definitely an interesting touchdown. This is probably the most exciting touchdown of the game and we're really lucky that we had enough people on the field to capture the whole thing because if it was just me and I was at the start there capturing the returner when he first received the ball it would have been pretty much impossible for me to get this shot at the end where the returner is like celebrating his touchdown. You wouldn't have even be able to see from 100 yards away whether or not the returner got into the end zone. But fortunately, we got it. And then we got more fan shots, set the stage. We got a shot of the coach from the broadcast here just nodding his head and how disappointed he is with his special teams, kind of showing that emotion. And then we have a little section here where we have a music switch to kind of bring the tone down and set a more somber mood. I, I was, this was a little bit tongue in cheek by me. I picked a really like cheesy, sad song, but I felt like it kind of worked in the moment. I'll, I'll just play it. That was the follow through by McLeod Bethel Thompson. They were taping his thumb and he was trying to see if he could grip the football correctly. It was bothering him a little bit. We may see more of Chad Kelly. So the commentary kind of sets the stage there and tell you exactly what happened, which is great. Chad Kelly is the backup quarterback for the Argos and McLeod Bethel Thompson, who was the starting quarterback and was like their guy all year, played almost every meaningful snap, hurt his hand in the final quarter of the biggest game of the year and the backup's coming in. So the, again, the, I'm using the commentary to really tell the story at the end of the game because this is like crunch time. So the backup quarterback comes in. No one really knows how he's going to perform since he hasn't had many meaningful snaps all year. And immediately he takes off for like a 30-yard run, like takes a big hit and sets the team up in a good position to score a touchdown. And then on the next play, they hand off to their running back and he takes it into the end zone and they take the lead. After the extra point, of course. And then no one actually got the trophy coming down these stairs because they were very icy and we were all filming this very intense action. So I just cut to broadcast for one shot of the trophy coming back down to the field so that it could be presented to the eventual winner. Then this interception ended up being a really big deal, not only because it brought the ball back to Toronto when Winnipeg was pushing down the field to potentially win the game, but the player who got this interception, spoiler alert, then went on to win most outstanding player for the game and most outstanding Canadian for the game. And he was very emotional after the game. It was, it was like really just like heart wrenching type of stuff if you were there in person. So like I had to make sure that I like pretty prominently featured his big plays. And then skipping forward a little bit, we have a field goal here. Which was blocked. So Toronto didn't end up scoring off the ensuing possession and then Without like getting too into detail here, I just kind of like continue using commentary to play the story over. Toronto thinks they have the game won, but then, because they uh, sacked the quarterback and they're going to turn them over on third down, but then they get called for a face mask. As you can see here, it's clearly a face mask. Then Winnipeg has a field goal to win the game. We fortunately had like three people shooting this, so we have multiple angles of Winnipeg's game winning field goal or potential game winning field goal getting blocked as well. And then we have Toronto falling on the ball to kind of like secure the win. At this point, they just took a couple of knees and put the game away. There's the block in slow motion. And then we just get into our celebration shot. So I'm just gonna let this play out and we'll stop and talk about it.
So there's the classic Gatorade shot. I actually didn't get this. I was further down the sideline waiting for some player reaction shots. But fortunately, Colin, who was shooting with us, managed to just camp out and get this Gatorade shot, which is like kind of an essential shot to get in a championship game. I feel like there's always a Gatorade shower and you know it's coming and one of us got it, which is great. Now I was camping out to get this shot. This giant like six, eight man who plays defensive line for the Argos and this gets like a ton of sacks, just absolutely broke down into tears when they had like secured the championship and was just absolutely losing it. It was such an impactful shot. It was crazy to just like be in front of this man, just like crying over this championship. So I'm like, I really like held on this shot for a while. I really enjoyed it. And I thought it showed a lot of the emotion of winning. This is another very similar shot from my boss, Kyle. And this is the player who would go on to win most outstanding player and most outstanding Canadian. So if we have an emotional shot of him, I knew I was putting it in the video. The narrative. Were and then here's, an, and then the commentary that's under here about him talking about pe we, people were saying this narrative and we didn't believe it. We didn't believe the chatter outside of the locker room. That's from an interview that we went and got with him following the game. And I knew that right when we got that interview, I was using it for this. So that was kind of like an on the fly decision for us to go and like grab, we knew we were going to grab interviews, but kind of, to kind of go to him first and get that emotional interview. And then we just have like a bunch of shots on stage. And most of these stage shots were actually from Colin. I was actually having difficulty with security, unfortunately, and wasn't getting let into like the pit where all this was happening. I don't know, it was, it was a hectic time. There was a lot of people around, crowd management, I guess. Anyways, I couldn't get to the front of the pit to like actually get some good shots like this. Fortunately, Colin was able to. And we got like some emotional shots of the trophy being raised. And then right when the trophy ceremony was done, we went and got these shots. So we saw one of the receivers off the Argos walking out with a cup and then Colin was able to sneak in front of him and get this shot of him walking out. And then I got the next two shots of the backup quarterback who came into the game, talking to the camera and the most outstanding player showing us his trophies. Regarding this last shot, there's, I also kind of want to show you what happened prior to this little sound bite that I got here. So let's pull this off to the side and I'm just going to show this to you for a moment. So you can kind of hear before that clip happened, I kind of prompted him, Enoch, let's see the trophies. And look, when we're filming games, like, we're not supposed to be, like, interacting with the players all that much, especially not on the field. Like, we're supposed to be, like, fly on the wall, capture the action, stay in your lane. They're doing their thing. They're above the line. We're doing our thing. We're below the line. But in this specific situation with emotions running so high, being backstage, like, knowing I had to get a shot to kind of, like, finish this off, I prompted a player who was in a very good mood and asked him, to show me his proudest accomplishment from the season. You know, fortunately, he was in a good mood and he played along a little bit, showed me his trophies, and he gave me a great line, champs forever. And it was just a perfect way to end the video. So like, you can send it sometimes with this type of stuff, but you gotta be really careful when you do it and like understand like who you're talking to, what their demeanor is, what's the situation, like what's your role in everything. Like I'm full-time staff with the CFL and like, I'm pretty accustomed to that filming environment and no one's gonna get like mad at me for going and getting my shot as long as I'm like not ruining the broadcast. So I felt pretty comfortable going in and getting this like one specific moment and that's a moment I'm really happy with. I thought it was a great way to end the video. I wanted to kind of show you that like you can do this type of stuff and you can go get the shots you want with a little bit of like help, I guess, but you gotta be selective with when you do it. So just like some final takeaways, some final points I wanna add. Planning is super important. As you noticed on our mood board here, like everything was planned out and the game action second half highlights ended up running a lot longer than this just because a lot of stuff happened. But like everything was planned, all the moments that were on this mood board here, we hit all of them 
in this edit, everything was shown. And if I didn't plan this mood board, I guarantee you, one, I wouldn't have gotten all the shots I needed to because I wouldn't have thought to get something or somebody else wouldn't have thought to get something. Or two, I wouldn't have edited this together so cohesively because I would have like finished the video and then be like, oh shoot, I didn't include this one specific moment or oh no, I forgot to include enough warm up shots of this team. And then I would have to like go adjust all the music, move all the sound effects over, like, create space in the edit, recut everything and put in like a couple shots. The next thing is like finding ways to keep people engaged. So going through this video, I had three different songs. We had one song that led us up all the way to like the end of the first half. Then at halftime, we switched songs and got into the more intense second half. And then we switched songs again when we had the injury to the quarterback. And that song kind of built up, brought us through the end of the video and led us into the celebration. And then we finished things off. But for a six minute video, if I took one song and just kept looping it and like, kept it going the whole video, it would have gotten very dull very quickly. There was a lot of emotions in this video. There's a lot of emotions on the field and in the stadium. And if I'm not matching those emotions with the music that I'm picking and with the shots that I'm selecting, then it's gonna get boring really quickly. We're not just showing every play in a row like a highlight pack that you would see on SportsCenter. We're telling a story and like it shows some highlights from like a DSLR mirrorless camera type of perspective but it's really more of like, supposed to be more of like a cinematic piece than like a highlight pack. And when you're editing this type of stuff, you have to remember that because it can be really easy to get caught up in showing like every single play and making sure that everything gets in the video, but not everything has to get in the video, just the most important parts of the game that demonstrate the atmosphere, keep the audience engaged with what's going on and showcase the final result need to get in the video. And then the final thing I wanna talk about is like the use of commentary. This video is so driven by commentary. Like if I didn't have all the play-by-play -play stuff for me to show what's happening while it's being said or while some emotion is being conveyed by one of the play-by-play -play commentators to match the visual, like this wouldn't have had nearly the same impact. It's really difficult to keep up with what's happening in a football game when you're not seeing the whole game in a broadcast style feed with a clock at the bottom and the score in the quarter when you don't actually have someone talking you through it. So being able to grab commentary at the start talking about where we are and what the game is. Commentary in the middle talking about how impactful that certain touchdown was and how the Bombers have taken the lead or something. And then commentary at the end talking about how the Argos have come back and won the 109th Grey Cup. And it's really important that if you're making something like this, that you really consider how the audio is accompanying the visuals, or rather how the visuals are accompanying the audio throughout your storytelling process. Anyways, that's kind of my behind the scenes look at this Great Cup cinematic recap video. Hopefully you can take some tips from this video and apply them to any cinematic recaps or longer form type of storytelling content that you're working on to make it awesome. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips, tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis. I'd love to have you around for that. If you wanna support the channel, I have my LUTs and some effects packs linked down in the description on my website, petersorellis.com. I use the LUTs to color literally all my work, including this finished video. I know that we had the LUTs disabled for this little walkthrough here. But if you go watch the full version, it looks pretty good. So go check those out. And if you have any questions or like any comments or anything like that, you just want to like ask me something or say, hey, drop it down in the comment section. I'd love to have a chat with you down there. Anyways, that's going to be all for this video. So until next time, peace.